Hey guys, I'm Zeta Sage Plays, and today I'm going to show you how to build beautiful natural environments with free roaming animals and not a building in sight. So, in our Planet Wild series that you can see here, we concentrate on making amazing natural environments and making them look as beautiful as possible. And the number one comment that I get on these videos is how do you actually get these things to work? How do you get the animals to be free roaming with no buildings, no barriers, no nothing apart from the natural world? So today I'm going to show you exactly how to build invisible habitats with no buildings. All right, so the first thing we want to do is choose a location and what map we want to use to represent that. So we'll go to sandbox mode and new zoo and we have a whole load of new maps in the game since update 1.11. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use the new African grassland map and in this video I want to concentrate on the mechanics of how you actually get a natural habitat working. I don't want to concentrate on the vegetation and the landscaping and things like that. So we'll go with the new African grassland map uh, which I've not actually seen yet so looking forward to seeing this. Let's create the zoo. Nice. So we've got a good big space to work with here. We've got some hills in the background which looks nice. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to the sandbox settings and get this set up so that we can make a natural environment here. So in animal settings, we want to disable animal welfare because they're not really going to have much to eat in here. <laughs> um, and then that'll make sure we don't need to put feeders in everywhere, which is going to spoil the look of the sort of natural environment. We're going to turn off escapes so that we can just use the invisible null barriers to keep the animals in the habitats that we want them to be in without you being able to see any visible barriers. In economy settings, we're gonna to go to power everything so we don't have to bother putting down any power facilities. And in staff settings, we're gonna disable staff fleeing um, just so that we can make sure they can get their work done when they're in the zoo. Uh, if we hit okay, that's all we need to do with that. And that gets everything set up so this park is gonna run correctly. So like I said, we're going to keep this map really simple. It's all about how to get these working, not making it look nice. So I'm just going to do a couple of things. Firstly, I want a focal point in the middle of the map. So we're going to make a little watering hole. So we'll just sink that down and then drag this around. Just so we've got a little bit of area of water to get the animals to come to. So let's get some water in there. And then the next thing I like to do is get the plants in. So we can go to nature and then we'll set this up. So we're just seeing the African grassland plants. Want some acacia, obviously. So we get one of those in. Such a cool tree. And we'll get some slightly different ones in as well. And then what else should we have? Maybe a little bush somewhere. Now, if you make sure you've got random rotation on, that will stop them from all looking the same. Maybe put a few reeds in round the watering hole. But yeah, just keeping it really simple. Maybe put a few patches of grass in, sink them down into the ground, just for a bit of variety. Won't be going too crazy, like I said. Another couple of bushes. And hey, let's put one rock in. Nice. Okay, and then all you do is you hit the I key and select everything you've just placed, merge it into a group, and then we can start copying it around. So we'll just copy this here, hit the Z key to spin it so it's not exactly the same every time you copy it. And we'll just put this all over the map. Obviously, if you want this to look really good, you're gonna to need to spend a lot more time on it than this, but this will just give us a bit of a background for the video while we concentrate on getting this into an actual habitat that's gonna work and look good. Okay, I think that'll do. So on to the mechanics of actually getting this working. So we're gonna need some habitats, of course, and we're gonna do this with two habitats, one for the herbivores and one for the carnivores. So we go to barriers and we're gonna select the null barrier. And then we're just gonna draw in a really big habitat. So let's set the length all the way up to there, just to save us some time. And you want these habitats to be nice and large so the animals aren't all sort of grouped together. Make sure you've got a few trees in there for interest. And then we'll bring it round, and I'm gonna have it go halfway through the watering hole so the animals have access to water. 
and we'll just join these up here. And then we need a habitat gate to make this a functioning habitat. So I'm going to put a habitat gate here. And for reasons that will become apparent, we're going to use the small habitat gate. So we'll put that in there. And now we have ourselves a habitat. Now the key to making these is basically you need to be able to get rid of pretty much all the infrastructure once you finish building it so it can't be seen. So almost all the infrastructure that we put in here we will be able to delete. We can't delete this habitat gate so these need to be covered up. So the way the game works is that there's an area around the entrance to a habitat which essentially doesn't work in terms of collision detection. So it doesn't matter what you put in this little bit here the staff will be able to walk straight through it. They'll always come in through the gate, get to about here, chuck the animal in in its little box, and then walk out again. If you put a tree here, they're gonna have to walk around it. But if you put a tree here, they will literally just walk straight through it, which is really useful for making things like this. So if we go back to the nature tab and get ourselves another one of these bushes, maybe that one, Maybe this one will work better. And we're literally just gonna put this bush in here to hide the habitat gate. So I'm gonna use two of them. And there we go. So you can't see the habitat gate at all. And it's not gonna affect the staff being able to walk through it. Just gonna do a bit of terrain painting around this little watering hole as well, just to make it look a bit better. Maybe we'll put some shorter grass around the edge as well. There we go. And that's the herbivore habitat done. Let's get on to the carnivore habitat. So again, we're gonna to go to barriers and then null barrier. And to make this easier for what we're gonna do at the end of the video when we uh, introduce the animals to each other, we're gonna join these habitats on. So we'll break off from this habitat, just hit the plus sign. And we'll get another one going out around here. Make sure you don't obscure the gate that we've already got, so we will join it on here. And then again, we're gonna get a small habitat gate and put it about here. And now we have a carnival habitat. Because we've got escapes turned off, at the moment, they won't interact. So the carnivores won't be able to go beyond this null barrier here. The herbivores won't be able to go beyond it from the other side. So everyone's going to be perfectly safe and happy for the moment. And once again, we'll hide this gate. So let's choose a different bush this time. Or maybe some elephant grass. I'll just put that in there. And once we change the path, we now have two habitats that are completely invisible. All right, so with the habitats in, the next thing to do is get all the facilities buildings. Now these buildings are gonna be deleted before we actually get this habitat up and running. So it doesn't really matter what we do with them. So we only really need two things. We need a trade center so that we can get the animals in here. So let's put one there. And depending on how long this takes to set up, we might need a staff room for the staff. So we'll put the staff room, let's say, there. And then we'll just join these up to the paths that we already have. This is purely to get the animals into the habitats. We don't really need anything more than that. And then we're gonna need some staff. So we've got a lot of animals to get in, um, then mainly we just want loads and loads of caretakers. So we'll drop these all down here, and these will get all the animals moved in for us. And like I say, all of this will be removed once the animals are in. So let's go to the animal market and choose some animals. The African wild dogs, which I have literally never ever used in this game. So I'm looking forward to seeing these guys. So we'll just buy a load of these, a nice pack of eight of them. And then we'll select all of these and get them into the carnivore habitat. So caretakers are gonna be pretty busy getting the animals into the habitat, but that's gonna be our main carnivore for the episode. And as the animals come in, you'll see the caretakers walk straight through the elephant grass because they'll just ignore it and start getting the animals into the habitat. There we go. 
nice pack of African wild dogs. Now you're going to get a lot of alerts at this point about not having keepers and vets and things like that. You can just ignore those. So carnivores are in. Let's take a look at the herbivores. So I'm thinking a pair of giraffes would be nice. Then we'll get some gazelles in to act as the, uh, the prey item. Sorry gazelles. And then we'll just select them all and send them into the herbivore habitat. So we've got our gazelles in here and we've got the wild dogs over here. They're perfectly happy keeping their distance from one another. All right, so the penultimate stage is to start getting rid of all these buildings so we can get a really natural environment look. So we need to put an exit in so that we can get rid of these staff members. So if we go to guest facilities and then zoo entrance and get the guest spawner, and then if we go to the staff menu, select them all. And these guys have served their purpose, so we will just fire them. So they're all gonna leave the um, zoo onto that pad there. In the meantime, we can start getting rid of these buildings. And let's get rid of the entrance as well. I really like this new entrance they've put in. Oh, and uh, you can always close the zoo as well. Make sure we get rid of these people. And we'll delete the entrance and then start deleting these paths as well. And then we can delete these guest spawners. Now we can get rid of all of these paths. Make sure you get rid of every path or anyone left in the zoo will end up stood in one little bit. Let's get some more grass over these areas here. And there you go, a beautiful African savanna landscape. All the animals are happy, all the animals are running about. They can't access each other's habitats. So if you turn off animal deaths, then you can keep this habitat for as long as you like and the animals will be perfectly happy. However, if you want something a bit more exciting and you want to see some hunting, then we're going to make one final change to the habitats to make that happen. So we've got a beautiful scene going on here. If you want to make it a little bit more exciting, then the last thing that we're going to do is remove the barriers between the habitats. So the way to do this, we need to pause the game and then we're gonna select one of the habitats. So let's get in here and find the habitat gate. There it is. So what we need to do is go to edit barrier. And the reason we're pausing is we need to do this all in one go because you can only have one habitat gate per um, habitat. So we're gonna just gonna right click to remove these joins. And then also right click to remove this gate and now when we deselect the habitat and select it again we just have one big habitat with no barriers between the two different sides and you know what that means time for some more cinematics yes it's hunting time these african wild dogs are really impressive looking really happy with how this turned out i really hope you guys find this useful let me know in the comments if you did and if you've got any questions don't be afraid to ask don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more of these habitats and if you want to see a much more advanced african landscape then check out the video in the top right now thanks for watching guys bye